Happy Wednesday morning to you, Cross Point Alliance Church. Hope that you're well, resting in Jesus. Good to be with you via video and connecting with you in this way. And wherever you're at, uh, let's just consecrate the time to the Lord, the day, if you're on the front end of the day or if you're on the back end of the day. Um, join me in giving praise to the Lord and thanking Him for the privileges that we have to serve Him in these wonderful times. I mean that. These are incredible times. Uh, a couple of things I want to run by you, then I want to talk to you about a scripture from First Timoth or Second Timothy two two. But uh, just kind of keep everyone abreast with what is happening here. We had a great time with guess who's coming over for dinner this last Sunday, and that was just about getting us to get in each other's homes and practice fellowship with one another. And I'm I'm just hearing some some great reports from the folks who participated there and um, who um, leaned into that, but. Uh, we are gonna relaunch our small groups second week of September, first weekend, kind of first week, it's kind of Labor Day, uh, but the second week in September, we'll be launching our small groups. So uh, heads up on that, we have two groups. We have a third that is kind of in the works. And um, so uh, more t details will be coming forward on that, but at least two and uh, possibly a third we're, we're seeing. And I know that many of you are meeting in groups that are officially not called small groups. So I know that there's such a thing. I think we all understand that, but uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is that uh, this fall, this will be the, the second Sunday in September, we'll be rolling out during the Sunday school hour, a, a class in church history. So, um, We'll be running that through December the 18th. So that'll go from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. So uh, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. And, and it'll start at 9 a.m. Uh, so uh, if you wanna be a part of that, you wanna make sure you get here on time and jump on board. Should be a lot of fun, a lot of fun. And then uh, also this Sunday, um, I've got Pastor Bruce telling me that we have uh, Ramey and Eli Bocelli. I probably got that last name wrong. I think it sounds like Eastern European. Uh, Bocelli will be here this Sunday to share with us their ministry. You say, well, who is that? Well, the, Ramey is the daughter of Dennis and Lori Turner. And uh, the Turners are members here and they work in the district office. And also Ramey would be the granddaughter of Lonnie and Leah Willis. So also they'll be at the Turners' home, I believe August the 24th, it's a Wednesday, 7 p.m. for some further intel on their ministry. So you could uh, check in with Church Center app and get the Turners' address and we'll have more information coming. But uh, that's my understanding. So anyway, a scripture from 2 Timothy 2.2. 2, and um, I, I, I'm sharing this because our elders were kind of kicking this around and looking and leaning into this last night during our elder meeting. But here, uh, 2 Timothy 2. Uh, starting in verse, let's just go verse one. You then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus and what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses and trust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. So a little bit of a generational handoff there. Um, Paul taught the gospel to Timothy and taught him how to live out his faith. And then he's charging Timothy to take what he has learned and to pass it on to faithful men. Faithful men because they can be entrusted with the gospel and with the teaching who also will then pass it on to others. So kind of four generations going there. But uh, in discipleship, say what is discipleship? And you get varying definitions, but um, um, Discipleship is, I would say at one level anyway, is teaching someone, communi communicating to someone the um, character and competence of Jesus. Uh, put it another way, uh, showing someone, teaching someone how to imitate Jesus, how to live like him, live a life like him. But, um, and there are different definitions as to what discipleship is, but Jesus says, go and make disciples teaching them to observe everything that I've commanded you. So whatever that is, teaching others about the Lord and about his ways, that's discipleship. 
But uh, that's what Paul gave to Timothy. Timothy was to give to faithful men who also give it to others. So what does it look like in a local church? Usually it uh, takes expression in a lot of programs. You say, well, what is that? A program would be something like maybe adult Sunday school or a class or um, even the preaching and teaching and what we do on Sunday morning. If someone becomes a Christian and they join up with them, with us, on a Sunday morning, we are teaching them and showing them that these are the North American expressions of worship, and uh, that would be discipleship. So program, usually that's the official classroom, or it's, it's more, um, it's, it's organized, and it's iterative, and there's usually a start time and end time, and then you go home. That's one way to disciple people and it's it's almost like a conveyor belt if i can use that phrase i know a lot of you have yelled at me for saying hey don't and i get it it, it it's it's not amazon but almost like you pop someone into the systems and then then you just they take the classes and they go to the small groups and they uh, then they they grow and they become more christ-like that is one approach it is a faulty approach if that is the only approach and, and I'll, I'll tell you why but I'm saying that uh, because if we rely on the programs to get someone from point A to point B, there is something significant that's missing there, and that's a personal kind of relational touch. So when Paul was discipling Timothy, it was not classroom. This was life on life. Like they did things together. Timothy traveled with Paul, and he hung out with him, uh, with Paul, and uh, was they were doing life together, especially there in, in Ephesus. So um, I can only imagine in those early days in the early church, I, there would have been both. There would have been official teaching and instruction, but a lot of life on life. So the one aspect of entrusting the gospel to faithful men and faithful women is through official church teaching. But there's another way, and I know for, for me, uh, that uh, has experientially has, has traditionally in, in my life has been more relational in nature. So well, what do you mean by that? This is the discipleship that is happening after the small group. Well, that was loud in this room. After the small group is, o is over. This is the discipleship that is happening after the church service is over and they're hanging and you're hanging out in the lobby. Or this is the discipleship that's taking place at the coffee bar or at the coffee house or at the restaurant or at the at, at your home where you're just talking about life talking about experiences maybe struggles and you start to discuss how the lord might have you think act and behave in a certain situation but it's not program heavy in fact it's, it's, it exists outside of those structures. Not saying those structures are bad. We need them. Take them away and we have a big problem. But uh, so those are kind of two aspects or two ways of doing discipleship. And so let me, uh, let me caution all of us to not rely too heavily on the, the programs to carry discipleship. So if a, if, a, if a new believer comes in and just pop them into the system hey, you know, they'll make it to the other end. No, someone's going to have to talk with them. Someone's going to have to lean into them. So here's my question to you. Uh, can you think of someone in your life who discipled you maybe when you were younger or if you are younger right now, who is discipling you or who you kind of look to for some wisdom and guidance? Can you think of a person? Okay, I can think of a lot of people for me. Um, those are usually the people you remember when you think back. So if you can think of someone who discipled you and maybe how they did it, here's my next question to you is how are you discipling um, the people who are coming after you? Have you singled someone out or how do you go about it? How do you work through that? Because intentionality is, is very helpful. And if the relationship is declared, um, that helps too. It doesn't have to be. A lot of it can be kind of under the radar but that's my question, like who are you discipling? If you're a teenager, which I doubt any teens are watching this video right now, who are you discipling? Nobody gets off the hook. Like everyone's supposed to be discipling someone. And this 
happens, again, inside programs, but it also happens outside of programs. So who are you discipling? You say, well, what's the big deal? Doesn't the church just take care of that? Well, we are the church. We are the people. Um, if I'm reading the Gospels rightly, the investments that we make in other people in discipleship will pay off dividends. And so when we get to heaven, they'll come up and they'll greet us as friends. And they're going to thank us for the investments that we made in that were made in them. And um, so that's a, uh, that's a good investment. So that's kind of that. We were talking about that last night, and uh, I want to bring that to your attention in 2 Timothy 2.2. 2, uh, who's discipling you and who are you discipling? And, and don't settle for trite answers. Don't allow yourself to get off the hook. Um, be very precise. And if you uh, can't think of a name, maybe it's time to start thinking of a name. Anyway, we're gonna pass on what we got. All right, let me bless you, Crosspoint. Okay, Lord bless you and keep you. Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.